Good evening and welcome to the MP NFL First Division edition of the Footy Show on Game Face. My name's Dan Lonigan. Great to be here, and we're at the Shark Bar, which means we're down at Sorrento. We could be at Bomb Beach, but we're at Sorrento tonight. Two Sharks, of course, in the First Division competition. There is no Chris Holcomb. He's in Cairns, I think, on a conference with Harvey Norman. There's no Tony Blackford. Not sure why he's not here. There's no Josh Moore. Not sure why he's not here. But Glenn Carter, our boss, is here. G'day, Glenn. Good to have you with us. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Scraping the bottom of the barrel if I'm here, mate. But I'll do my best and uh, see if I can hold my own. And we've got two of the stars of the Sorrento Sharks are on top of the table. It was a pretty tough day for them at the office on Saturday, but they found a way to win. 27 scoring shots to 15, but as I say in the classics, a win is a win is a win. Their coach, Luke Tapscott, who's been reappointed for 2019, and one of the characters of the team, sees himself as a good media performer, and I reckon he is too, Lee Paholke. Welcome, boys. Good to have you with us. And can I start, Lee, uh, uh, with, with you, Luke, I should say. You got over the line on Saturday, 10-17-77-12-375. When I look at a result like that, 27 scoring shots to 15, I would have thought that you should have thrashed them, but you believe that it deserved to be tight like it was. Yeah, definitely. Mornington are a much better outfit than the sort of first time we come across them. They have nine players or so back in their side and, um, yeah, made it a really hard-fought game. And um, In some aspect, aspects, they probably deserved to win the game, but we were uh, lucky enough that we could just scrape over the top in the end. You frustrated with all the points you kicked? Yeah, a little bit. It's, uh, it's happened in quite a few games of late. I think we're just uh, trying to keep the games close for the crowd's involvement, but um, hopefully we turned around and kick straight and we can get a three or four goal buffer. Um, I reckon on the weekend if we manage that, then the game might have broken open a little bit, but um, like you said, we'll take the win in the end. And, and Lee, is a, a win like that, I mean, this is such a tight competition, do you get more joy out of a win like that than a 10, 12, 14 goal rock, which you've had so many times, particularly in the Nepean League in recent years? I think you do for a one-off. Um, I think now we've won 16 games behind a 15, six games behind a 15 points. So uh, it is more enjoyable. It does make it sweeter, but the games are definitely you know harder. You've got to work for longer. Um, it's four quarters, so it takes more out of the body and um, probably takes more preparation and prep work for Luca on the training track on Tuesday and Thursday. But, you know, six and two, behind 15 points is a good result for us so far. Well, for a big chunk of the day, the whole footy community thought you'd been beaten. Whoever was yeah. doing the scores obviously fell asleep at three-quarter time or got busy or whatever happened, happened. But, um, you know, we had people ringing out saying, is it true? Mornington got over the line and you were saying that some of your supporters have been saying to you during the week, you know, right, not until late that night we realised that you actually won. Yeah, I think Jeff might have fallen asleep or something like that old Morgo, but uh, I can say that because I guarantee he doesn't have Facebook. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, old, old Morgo might have fallen asleep at the wheel there, but uh, I know I've been working at the pub all week and everyone's been coming in and going, we thought you lost, we only found out Sunday morning that we won, so, well, bad luck to uh, whoever did the scoring, so I don't reckon they're going to get that job again. <laughs> do, you, do you feel like you're in good shape? I mean, you are one game clear on top, and uh, Edith Val Aspendale had the biggest loss of the season. We'll talk about that shortly. Last week to Frankston YCW. I mean, you're doing most things right, Luke, aren't you? We are. Well, I suppose we're doing the, the main thing right in, in winning, but mm. um, we still had a lot of improvement to do. Uh, I don't think we're anywhere near a, um, our peak performance as a team as of yet. Um, clearly starting with kicking straight, but um, our stoppage work and a few of our defensive efforts can get a whole lot better. Um, and yeah, just adjusting to, to what each team's bringing um, from week to week and adjusting to the game styles we're coming up against, because there are a few that are, that are quite different uh, from team to team. Um, but yeah, we're, um, I think we, we're going along right. No brainer to stay on as coach next year? Yeah, definitely. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm going nowhere. It was, um, I was wrapped when the club came to me a few couple of weeks ago now and asked if I'd like to extend and I have no reason whatsoever not to and thoroughly enjoying the time and I'm, uh, well, I haven't heard any whispers that the players aren't and they're all playing, <laughs> they're all playing all right. So no, I was stoked to um, sign for 2019 and then we can start get the, getting the ball rolling for, for next year as well. Do you feel that this could be the start of a, a long coaching career that you'd like to do something permanently in coaching, whether it be at local football level, community football level, or even AFL level down the track. I think so. It's a good. I think it's a good uh, good stepping stone, anyway. So, but like I said, coaching's um, always been in the back of my mind. Do I do I or don't I want to do it? I thought I was going to be a teacher when I was when I was younger. So I suppose that um, developing players or de developing people is 
as uh, to become better people um, has always been something that I've enjoyed doing and uh, even the, um, the coaching clinics as such when I was at, at Melbourne I really really enjoyed doing that sort of thing. I know we're interviewing Troy uh, today as well but mm. um, obviously you know he's a premiership coach and he's uh, made his comeback this year. What, what does that do for you as a coach? Does it add pressure or do you harness the experience that comes with it and work with him? How, how do you how do you mix that up with uh, Troy moving forward? Oh, definitely welcome it, welcome it with open arms. I was still in co- um, really, clo- really close contact with Troy even when I, I took over. We obviously yeah. had a bit of a go as it go at it together last year. Um, but yeah, we've been in close contact. You can't uh, have enough people with experience around you. Um, so him, him to be back is really exciting in a playing aspect, but also um, yeah, to have him right at my uh, right at my hand mm. to. Yeah, dig into his brain to find out about different things. It's great. Good. Lee, did you think he'd come back? Troy? Yeah. Uh, just watching him run around earlier on, I wasn't sure if he was, but he's the type of bloke, he's got a lot of experience in his legs and he knows his body really well. Um, you know, a month of training and he's moving you know, just as well as he was last year. It's an advantage when you retire on top and you're playing pretty well. It means that you know he hasn't dwindled down at all over the last five years into a soft retirement he sort of went out on top which means he's got you know plenty of run left in the leagues mm. what about Lee Treby do you think he'll come back and a second part of this question were he and his wife portrayed unfairly on that show you guys know them better than most and it, of course we know it's very heavily edited so they always like controversy those sort of shows but they were portrayed as nice people but I'm sure they are nice people no it's not very nice at all Lee's the type of bloke that um, he's very aggressive on the footy field Absolutely, but he's also the type of bloke that would give you his jumper off his back if he could. He'd give you his last dollar. So I know the show had to sell, you know, sell ratings, and they were portrayed as the, the bad guys. But I probably think it's a little bit unfair. It's probably unfair the way the Peninsula treated him online. Um, if you don't know the bloke and a show's portrayed him a certain way, I think it's a bit unfair to jump on and have opinions on their personality and their lifestyle and the way they treat people if you're going off a TV show. What's the, what's the old saying though, Luke? If you put your head on the chopping block, it's going to get chopped off. <laughs> exactly. Unfortunately for Lee and his wife and family. It's the, uh, it's the life we live, especially online, isn't it? There's plenty, yes. of, uh, plenty of keyboard warriors out there. Is, <laughs> he, is he going to play though? I mean, that's the big question because he's a terrific player. He played at Woodville West yeah. Times. He knew, of course, one of the other contestants uh, in yeah. Derek Petrenko played a lot of footy for the Crows. Um, yeah, no, he's a, he'd be a massive asset to come back this year, but unfortunately he's decided that he's not going to. He had oh. quite a few concussions at the end of last year and he was thinking that um, he hasn't done the block of work to, uh, to feel comfortable in playing. Um, and then, yeah, also coming back sort of this late in the season, he didn't uh, quite feel comfortable enough obviously kicking someone out of the side as well. So. Kane Face interviewed him last year upstairs. In fact, I interviewed him and... Um, you were up there as well. He was pushing out handstand push-ups. You know, I think he pushed about 30 up while I was sitting there setting up. And uh, he was just an absolute freak in terms of his fitness level and how hard he was working, uh, you know, off the track. So he was coming back from an injury, and when he came back, he performed well as always. So I wouldn't have been at all surprised to see him match ready to come back this year, but obviously, well, you know. That's what I thought. I saw him and thought he was in better shape this year than what he was last. I thought you were going to say to me. I said, no uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they were doing a lot of heavy lifting, of course, uh, on that show, so yeah. they, they had to stay fit, didn't they? Yeah, I think he, uh, he enjoys his, uh, in, his muscles, so he would have been happy that they made him wear a singlet every show. <laughs> <laughs> Just before we look at the results, um, who do you base your coaching on? You met a lot of coaches in the AFL. Dean Bailey was one, Mark Neal was another, Paul Roos, uh, he's come here, Drew yeah. Schwartz. Neil Craig. Neil yeah. Craig, is there a little bit of all of them? Uh, maybe not all of them, um, but no, my first coach in Bales was, was super, I uh, thoroughly enjoyed my time under him. Um, Very just, sad. Yeah, extremely sad, Great his, uh, his story, but um, yeah, just the personal side of his coaching, um, you almost felt that he was a father figure more so than a coach, um, cared just as much as what you were doing off field as what you were doing on, um, and yeah, you know, I don't think anyone at the footy club ever felt like they weren't wanted, so that's probably the the coach that I based my stuff on mostly. But obviously back then I wasn't really thinking about coaching; I was more so worried about getting the game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I obviously think back about those sorts of things, talk to different coaches, like you mentioned Troy. Um, and now that I've had a few, I just try and take the best out of each and 
try and watch a lot of press conferences and stuff and just pick up little things along the way. You were comfortable though, like you were good enough to let Gameface into the rooms at half time when you were up against EDS and that was a tight contest. Uh, neither of you were playing that day, both out injured, but um, you know, you look at home. You're up working the board, talking to the, the players, and, and there was a lot of interaction amongst the players as well. It seems that you don't mind, particularly the senior uh, leadership group, um, talking up, and um, you know it worked. I, I was I was super impressed with sort of how it was all structured up at half time, and you obviously got the win that day as well. You just snuck in against CDS, yeah, but really um, you know it, you you do seem like you fit in well. You have, and it's not affecting you 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 play on the field either, you, you're still getting a kick so you've found a way to make it work. Yeah, I suppose it's a bit of a juggling act to start with the way the year started but now I'm feeling quite comfortable. I reckon the, the break that I had while I had my hamstring injury um, allowed me to see our team in a different light as well. Mm -hmm. Players in certain positions and getting a feel of um, actually being able to watch the game and make a few decisions on the sidelines has, uh, has really helped and be able to create a few guidelines for Dion and Plugger and also those two on the sideline of making my job far easier so well Troy found a way to make it work over the years as well so just <laughs> not a bad record I suppose. looking at the results of course a two point win to <coughs> Sorrento and uh, a man who's, who's in the room getting ready for training uh, the man they call the pig by some former Gold Coast teammates he's very hard nosed and hard at it in Mitch Hallahan absolutely sensational Lee what does he bring to the team how inspirational is he in the middle of the ground it's funny because we, we didn't have him um Last year, you know, Luke had to do a lot of the heavy lifting. With James sort of, you know, he's, he's really good with ball in hand. James, you don't want him going in to win it. But you know, Mitch, now we, you know, we rely on him pretty heavily because he's. It's amazing how many times when you watch the footage back that you see a 50-50 ball and he's running at it, and nine times out of ten, the bike coming the other way pulls up straight away and tries to tackle him. Um, he's a bull. He can kick the ball 55 meters. Um, he's very humble. Not. But uh, <laughs> look at him smiling over there. He's always here early. Every Tuesday, he's out uh, helping with the girls' footy. Good. Every Thursday, you know, he's you know he's always on the phone. He's always able to get in contact. And uh, I think he's adjusted. Probably, I think he's the third or fourth ex AFL player we've had down here, and he's adjusted the best out of any of them. Whether that's because he's a bit slower and the game suits him, uh, maybe that's why he didn't quite make it the Gold Coast. But uh, he's fitted in beautifully here, and he, I think he's. Uh, if we can have a good five or six years with us. Now, I, I need to ask this question. At the very start of the year, Luke was appointed coach at the last minute, and he probably can't answer this question because he was asked to take on the job. You had Tony Blank, but he's part of our panel. Um, it was obviously, I would have thought, a tough decision to replace a coach so late into a pre-season because of the disruption. Do you think that you recovered pretty quickly from that? And uh, at the end of the day, why was that decision made? And do you think the club has come out of it okay? Yeah, I think the committee made a decision. Um, the playing group supported it. Luke's, you know, slotted in seamlessly. Um, we're, what, what are we, 13 and 3 or 12 and 3 or something like that? 11 and 3 even. Um, I think it's a pretty good decision. Uh, we're going along beautifully. We've got Luke on next year. Um, I think everything's worked, you know, worked out well. The club couldn't be happier. What about the perception, though, in the football world? Or well, you don't care about that? We're not, too, we're not too worried about the perception of it. We can understand it looks, it could, how it looks from the outside. Mm. But the bottom line is, um, once the committee makes a decision, if we harp and hide on it, then we're not going to play very good footy. So um, we've got a lot of leaders amongst the football club that um, made the switch very quickly to support Luke. And I think uh, we're all extremely happy with how he's going. Well, looking at other results, uh, Pines, 21-11-137, that was magnificently uh, answered too. I, I threw a couple of bounces in and you put me away to the boundary for four. Like the great <laughs> Alan Turner, one of my favourite cricketers. Pines, 21-11-137 to 11-12-78. That was as good a win as we've seen. And when we were down there on Thursday night and uh, Chris Holcomb is not with us tonight, uh, I thought he wouldn't get, get out there alive because he said Pines were the most vulnerable team of those in contention to play in the finals and they've absolutely pulled Frankston Bombers' pants down. They got the Bombers within 26 points, had a good third quarter, but then Pines pulled away. They had multiple goal kickers and obviously, uh, Luke, when you play them, they've got the tall forwards, they've got the multiple goal kickers, they had 12 of them in total. Aaron Edwards didn't dominate. That's a good sign to them. Oh, well and truly. They're, uh, they're probably the most informed side at the moment. Um, so yeah, we've got a really exciting game this Saturday. Have you ever? Um, it's a beauty, isn't it? Hopefully them never setting foot on Sorrento's ground might help <laughs> us a little bit. But, like I said, they were, um, they were playing some reasonable footy last time. I think they 
just lost the last three or four games by under a goal or two goals. So they yeah, took it up to your last time, didn't they? They did definitely. Yeah, three quarter time. I think it was yeah. just about even. We, Stevens wasn't could it? Kick straight. We mm. should have been well in front. Yeah, you could but kick straight, I mean, if I could kick straight. straight. <laughs> um, yeah, so hopefully I'll bring my right boots this week and kick mm. straight. But like I said, twelve goal kickers. That's dangerous in any side. So um, that's what we're working towards, and hopefully. Well, 137 points, it's not a bad score. Well, they're a good starting team, Pines. They, like, they did the same thing to, to one. Yeah, and they did the same thing to EDS. Yeah, so they come out hard, and when you mm. get a big... I spoke to Chris Sharman during the week, and they had their, their ball on the weekend, and he said to Bo Muston, I'll look after the ball, you go get the four points. And um, at the end of the day, he said, I held up my end of the bargain, what happened to you, blokes? <laughs> and he said, well, they just jumped us in the first quarter, and we, we couldn't catch them. So, you know, I... I, I think Pines are the boogie team this year. They they're really coming good at the right end of town, uh, end of um, end of the season, and they're looking good. I it, think it'll yeah. be a cracking game this week. It's a good point that Luke makes as well, Glenn, about Pines not having been here. You guys playing on grounds for the first time. Did, did that Lee take a little while to get used to? Or, <laughs> or or a football ground's a football ground at the end of the day. It's got goalposts at the end of it. Or is fortunate. that a bit too simplistic? I was fortunate enough to play on all of these grounds. Um, at Karingle, so I know him quite well, and I often get bagged upstairs when we have our meeting on Thursday night for saying this grounds this or this grounds that. Mm. Um, they all give me grief. Um, it is nice to go to these grounds and, and win some games of footy, um, but obviously it's a massive advantage. Our grounds, it's small. You know, there's no other way. It's small and heavy. Normally, when you get a small mm. ground, it's quick and it's mm. hard. You know, our ground's small and heavy, so we play it really well. Um, Pines have got two key forwards. Uh, we know how hard it is to work two key forwards on this deck. It, it doesn't fit in extremely easy because it's so short. It's mm -hmm. very hard to try and get them in the right positions. Um, so, you know, they are the informed team of the comp. And I think they, you know, they always have a period every year where they hit some seriously good form. Um, if you look over the last two or three years, in eight weeks of footy, they'll play the best footy of the year. Um, and then they probably run into YCW. Um, camp finals, so you know, they're obviously <laughs> going pretty well. And speaking of YCW, like you guys got a front row seat to them at the start of the season when they were up and going. And look at his back by the looks of things. Yeah. You know, um, that, uh, having a look at, I didn't see the game, but looking at some of the names that were in the best and Minchington in the goals, and you know they're they're starting to get some players back. And yeah. no one's no one who knows footy in this town will write YC well, off now. Well, remember we had the footy show at the Bay Hotel for Edith Aspinall two weeks ago and uh, I said, I've been in the comp seven weeks covering this league, haven't seen them win yet, and Graham Yates said, do not <laughs> poke the bear, Dan, and I obviously <laughs> poked the bear, and they've come out and given Edith Val Aspendale their biggest loss of the season, and their percentage, because of losing their points at the start of the year, is now under 100, which is mm. a, a concern for them, and uh, they, well, they led a quarter time. Four goals to two, and from then on it was 15 goals to two. Mm. I mean, that indicates how good, obviously, YCW can be, boys, if they get their game going. They just haven't got it going for a long time. Well, Wayne Cap reappointed during the week as well. It was, I was happy for him to see the club back him, and uh, then for them to come out and have a good win uh, against CDS, who I think are a top side. You guys have had a close look at those guys as well. You know, it's just so exciting to see what's coming up finals time in the next few weeks. I think they're the most dominant. When they get on a roll, they are unstoppable. We got that round one. Once they get on top, it's and we copped it here too. We had a good lead and they kicked four goals in six minutes of footy and that's six minutes including time on. Um, so when they get on and top... they certainly yeah. didn't have the best players. They had a lot no, of the best players out that day. No, they have Macklin Rain who's, you know, they lose Ash Eames mm. and what are the chances you get yeah. Macklin Rain to come yeah, in and, going well, and do the ruck. And the last game, of course, Mount Eliza, 9 6 60. They managed to get over Bomb Beach, and you guys know that Bomb Beach are hard to beat. They beat you a few weeks ago. They got away in the last quarter, but that uh, was a real hard slog, as it often is when you play Bomb Beach. Yeah, definitely. They, um, they thrive on little wins and every little contest throughout the game, and um, obviously it wasn't a great day for footy playing those blokes, but mm. they, uh, yeah. They had the will to win just a little bit more than what we did in that day. And our special guests, of course, Glenn in Lee and Luke, brought to us uh, by the Frank Sonara. So great to have them on board as part of the Game Face Footy Show. Before we let you go, Lee, you've kicked 30 goals this year. You're 12 behind Aaron Edwards on 42. Any chance you can win the goal kicking? Oh, not at the rate I'm going. And I'm coming up against uh, Fisher this week from Pines, who's had my number twice now. So, 
it'll be a great opportunity for that me. was actually going to be my question is who's your toughest I can opponent see, i can see it there on the screen and uh, i can see that our next three pints i'm like you beauty i've pented this one in yeah. since he got oh, dan was in form six. last week down the pines he told fish he was a strange man i thought that was pretty brave well i can say that because i am a strange man <laughs> fish, fish, and then, fish, and then you man. told bongo that he had only a slightly better head than you well, that's right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, again, I've, I've, I've put myself last, so that, that, that was OK. But uh, he is an interesting fellow, Fisher, because he counts the number of goals that he has kicked against him. And if he can average just one a game, he's happy with that. He's like Lynn McGrath, the former Australian cricketer. He's been, happy, he's been happy twice against me then. I'm one and one against him, one at Karingal and one last time we played him. So, Good. fingers crossed. Good on you, boys. Great to... Uh, have you with us tonight. Thanks for having us down here and uh, big game on the weekend against the Pines. Be one of the matches of the season. Could be. Long way out though. Dress rehearsal for the grand final and uh, good luck and we'll no doubt catch up again as we get closer to the finals. Do we see you down here calling it this weekend, Dan? Uh, no, not this weekend. You'll have to talk to the powers that be well above the, uh, the pay grade for Glenn and I, unfortunately, <laughs> Lee. And you just throw that little hand grenade in as you so often do, but uh, we'll, we'll talk very soon. St Andrews Brewery, using the finest ingredients, ensuring each beer is full of flavour and character. Frankston RSL, Frankston's function and restaurant specialist. What's the last thing you ate? Uh, Carmen's coconut loaf. What do you never leave home without? Fun. What's your guilty pleasure? Does <laughs> that tell the story? <laughs> <laughs> What's your worst habit? Uh, probably chewing my nails. What really pisses you off? Uh, the D's at the moment. What are you scared of? Uh, scary movies. What's your dream job? Probably been there and done it. I don't know. Dream holiday destination? The Malfi Coast. What food can't you stand? No, I, I hit everything. Blondes or brunettes? Better say blondes. Get your game face on. Looking at the Division 1 goal kickers after 14 rounds and firstly the seniors, Aaron Edwards of Pines. You'd think he's a good chance of winning the goal kicking award now, leading by nine, kick three on the weekend to go to 42. Jordan Moncrief of Mount Eliza Goalers, he remains on 33. Trent Dennis Lane of Bond Beach goes to equal third on 30 after kicking two. Joined by Jackson Calder of Mornington, three goals on the weekend. Leeper Holke of Sorrento, one on the weekend to go to 30. And his teammate from Sorrento, Chris Dawes, kicked two. He's on 28. And Jared Grant of Frankston Bombers, despite his team's big loss, kicked a couple. He's on 25. With Jimmy Freeman of Mount Eliza, also goalless on the weekend. In the reserves, Michael Chaplin of Frankston YCW kicked one on the weekend. He's on 30. Six ahead of Tom Loney of Seaford. He booted two. He's on 24. And then an eight goal break to Mitch Chopping of Mount Eliza. None on the weekend. He remains on 16. Jake O'Neill of Edith Val Aspendale on 14. None on the weekend. And Will Mace of Mount Eliza kicked three to go to 14. And Reese Chalkley of Pines kicked two to go to 14. In the under 19, Sam Sturt of Mount Eliza remains on 25. The same with Josh O'Toole of Frankston YCW also on 19. And Tom Wisniewski has been on 18 for a long time. He's from Mornington.
finals is a bit up in the air. Uh, we, we are at the moment. It's, it's, it is what it is. And uh, I think there, there's a, a review looking at, through the com- commission and maybe put out another question set about... Well, I, don't, I don't really know what that means. Uh, I think the only option is really uh, what it means for Frankston Park and what it means for the grand final. But I think other than that, the, the, it is what it is and stands. I think uh, it was a bit disappointing... Uh, I don't think the forum worked well for uh, uh, the request to Frankston about, about looking at uh, why, they, why they won't budge on the financial side of uh, helping out the NFL to run the finals there. Probably needs, needs a separate forum, but, uh, but it was you know, a pretty honest answer. They said, no, they're out there to make money, and um, sort of we get that. But, you know, we would like, we'd like to have all four finals at the, uh, at the Frankston Park if possible, but not at the expense of losing out to, to uh, not being able to make money. So it was, overall, it was a good good night. Uh, there'll be more to come. I think um, this subcommittee sounds really promising. I think uh, every every club should be, you know, encouraged to contribute to uh, the longer term plan of the uh, competition. Pencon Garden Supplies and Mini Mix Concrete is a family owned business that has served the Mornington Peninsula magnificently for more than 50 years. For all your garden and building supplies, concrete, soil, sand and mulch, visit Bart and the team at 58 Peninsula Avenue Rye or call 59852252 or 59852998. What's the last thing you ate? Uh, what do you spend all your money on? Cars. What do you never leave home without? Cheese. What's your guilty pleasure? Yeah. What's your worst habit? Yeah. What really pisses you off? Yeah. What are you scared of? Claustrophobia. What's your dream job? Fishing. <laughs> what food can't you stand? Bonds or brunettes? This is the Game Face Footy Show, the first division edition, and uh, we're down at Sorrento. Great to be down here at Sharkland. On top of the table, one game clear, sitting pretty. We were going to have Troy Schwartz, the former coach, former St Kilda player, joining us, but he's got some family commitments and business commitments. So Mitch Hallahan has been more than happy to uh, jump in and replace him, the former Gold Coast and Hawthorne player. And Mitch, every time I see you play down here, I keep thinking, why aren't you at AFL level? Do you sometimes think that? Nah, that uh, that thought's long long gone out of my mind. You really think it's long gone? Yeah, for sure. Um, for me, you know, I'm more than happy just to be back here at Sorrento and uh, pulling on the jumper that I grew up playing as a kid. So that's the only thing that's in my mind at the moment is how I can help the team um, on our pursuit for finals. I know that the club would love to have you here next year, but what if an opportunity came up on a rookie list? Uh, I don't think there's going to be any uh, any opportunities. That's wishful thinking, Dan. Um, Look, I'm more than more than happy where I am at the moment, and um, you know, working on the next chapter of my life, which which is um, you know playing local footy and and sorting out a long-term career that um, you know can see me financially stable for years years to come. So you got a bit of bark off the brow here, mate. Just um, just a bit of a uh, touch up on the weekend. I wanted to ask, you know, the AFL players that come back into the system, sometimes they do get lined up. I know you've got. A bit of a reputation out there as having a boxing career, and there are probably a few blokes that would think twice about coming in with a cheap one. But has there been any of that this year? Have you been put to the test by any other clubs? Oh, look, not really. I think um, you can't really get away with too much these days with, um, at footy, particularly even even down here at local level. You know, there's still two or three umpires mm-hmm. out there, so it's very well policed. Um, you know, th- there's nothing untoward that goes on out there. Um, there's a fair bit of verbal stoush, but look. Um, that's not going to hurt. At the end of the day, we're all competitive beasts. We're all we're all there to play the footy and, and play play fair. And I think that's the way it, it's been this year. Which um, you know, it's a credit to the league and credit to the players. You know, we all we all compete hard. And then uh, the best thing about about the game at the moment is we come in here and have a beer together afterwards, and um, we talk about the game and uh, look forward to the next challenge. Mm. Uh, are you playing at the level you want to be playing at? I mean, you were best on ground on the weekend. They say you dragged Sorrento over the line. You obviously don't want to do that every week, but you want to be obviously playing at your optimum. Do you think you're there? Uh, that makes me feel a bit uncomfortable when you say that because um, you know we play in a team sport and there's uh, 22 contributors on the weekend, and um, I guess uh, you know there are individual performances that that help the team, and um, I don't think that's something that helped us on the weekend. I think you know everyone played their role, and um, you know probably a couple of times I just found myself in the right right spot, being able to benefit the team, and. Um, you know, I think as a collective, as, as a whole, you know, we're not playing um, 
to the potential that we probably should be, but we're still getting the job done, which is pleasing. So we've got we've got a month to tidy that up uh, in the, in the lead into finals now. So your next three, Pines, Seaford, Bombers. Uh, said to the two boys earlier, Pines took it up to you the first time you played. They're in form. You got them this week. Um, you know, Seaford have been playing well also, but um, the Bombers beat you last time you played. So it be an interesting three weeks, good test for you. Um, how have the mids, of particularly Pines and Bombers, uh, how have you, is there a particular player that stands out that's impressed you this year that's taken it right up to you? Um, both, both those, oh, I guess all three of those midfields are quite differently. Um, different. Uh, we look at, look at Pines and they rely heavily on Scanlon inside and, and the run of... Um, the big fellow on the wing, Bo- Boswood or Boswell. Nick yeah. Boswell, that's the one. Yeah, he's, yeah. Uh, he's in good form at the moment and, too. And Potts as well for the ball, ball yourself half back and wing. Uh, my understanding he's not going to be there this week. So I thought he was back this week, but well, I could be wrong. Who knows? If he turns up, he turns up. But um, <laughs> you just got to deal with it. Well, that's yep. right. You know, you play what's in front of you. So they've got some contested animals in in the team, and um, then you look forward two more weeks to the Bombers, and they're the same. You know, they've got three stocky little fellas that they rely heavily on. Yeah. And, um, you know, it makes for a great contest, and I guess you know we got to combat that and and try and uh, bring our strengths to the fore and and not allow them to get on top of us in that area. It's actually I'm enjoying because I know Lee did his roaming Paholke scene down at uh, Frankston Park when they came up against YCW at the start of the year, and I think that one of the questions he was asking you guys, and you fresh out of the AFL system, name three players from YCW, and I think you struggled to name one player. So as the season's gone on, you're getting to know your, your opposition, yeah. you're getting to respect your opposition, you're getting to understand what their strengths and weaknesses are. And, well, you know, it's good to see the two Nepean and uh, Peninsula divisions now coming together and starting to really understand who's out there and who they need to watch. Well, that's right. And it's no disrespect to the opposition back then, but, yeah, we obviously we knew the na- names on paper, but yeah. we had no idea how they were going to play. Yeah. So now that we've um we've got evidence on all the players you know we can sort of put names to faces we can put um you know strengths and weaknesses to players so mm. i think the better uh, the second time around the games have been a lot tighter and a lot better to watch so um makes for an interesting final series yeah I reckon. and Mitch, were there a lot of text messages to your former Gold Coast teammates after their unbelievable win over Sydney on the weekend? Have you spoken um, to many of them? I had a chance to. Or? Spoke to a few of them, but um, look, they're, uh, they've got their own struggles at the moment, and yeah. it, it's good to see them get a win yeah, against a formidable right. opponent. But um, like I said to you earlier, I was just worried about uh, our great win out here. So um, yeah. enjoying the company of my teammates and and the club for what was a great day um, down here for the Matty Rewalt Vision and uh, against Mornington. Yeah, it was. I mean, uh, I believe you raised plenty of money and that's what it's all about. It was well organised. I know Russell Morris, who's involved with uh, Sorrento, former St Kilda and um, Hawthorne player, heavily Full involved in that. Player. Yeah, premiership player. So uh, congratulations to him, congratulations to the club and to yourself. And uh, can you win the BNF in both the comp and also the club? I suppose you're not too interested in that, but I need no. to ask that question. Mitch. Look, no, it's... Um it's not something that's entered my mind at the moment, to be honest. Um, probably for me, like I said earlier, it's, it's about how, how can I make the team better and how can how can we, um, you know, set up our pursuit for for the finals and, and ultimately a grand final berth. So um, individual accolades, don't really think about them. Well, um, the skipper's wandered in. He's sitting <laughs> over there just chilling out. Your brother James, big brother, yeah. yeah. He's uh, he's having a cracking year too. He is, and um, you know it's a powerful weapon to have someone like him. You know, he can he's play. just taking the headphones off and heard his name too. Mitch. Well, he's he uh, he is up. I'm he not is sure. Up. Do, do you know if he realises he's got nominated in the lookalikes? He can face lookalikes during the week. Oh, I'm sure he knows. He uh, keeps tabs yeah. on himself. Um, but look, you know, it's great to have, great to be able to play with him. But also, um, see, see, you know, he's such a weapon for us. He can play inside, play outside. He, he fills a hole for us, and um, if. If we're struggling in the area, the beauty of it is we can rely on him to, to go go outside or go to a new position and have an impact for us. So All it's right, really well, good. He comes well, he's coming through in. the skipper. Big big brothers coming in. Come and stand on the little brother. Just the other side. Good to see you. <laughs> thanks for uh, thanks for coming in. Uh, how do you reckon this? How do you reckon your own season's going? I mean, uh, you are having a cracking year. Do you think you're playing as well as you've ever played? And the fact that little brothers with you is that helping too? You think? Yeah, no, it's awesome. It's a, it's a different experience. Um, like all, I was just listening to you guys talk about the new comp. It's always different coming up against new players. So mm. a lot of times I don't know a lot about you. So you can sort of get yeah. off the chain a little bit as well, not just myself, but everyone. Um, you've seen sort of a lot of people have really good games. So, and, but playing with Mitch, yeah, it's pretty special. Um, being able to walk off with him every week. 
and the family watching, so it's good. It's a, it's a good even comp, isn't it? Every yeah. game's tough. Yeah, it, it is. It is. It is. It's um, and to reiterate what Mitch was saying, we didn't really know a lot about how teams played, so. Yeah. These second lot of games, you know how they play. There's no easy weeks, as we saw against Mornington. Um, you know, who nearly pipped us, so probably a bit unlucky. So, no, it, is, it is a good comp and will be a good final series. Pines this week, who do you see yourself coming up against? Oh, I don't know, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I reckon Scanlon will go to Mitch, the two Bulls, and then, yeah, look, the rest, of us will, the rest of us will f fight it out, I think. That's just going to be a great contest to watch. You know, the old veteran Paul Scanlon, Chewy, he, he just doesn't stop. And uh, you don't like to be beaten, so it's going to be a good battle. Yeah, look, we, we faced off a fair bit uh, last game, and I think both of us agreed at the end of the game, you know, how good was that? And um, like you said, he's the veteran. I'm, I'm still relatively still young compared to him. So, Absolutely. And they uh, say he's going again next year. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. Well, good on him. Good. We'll try and get well, him down in the Sharks. 40. He's 40. He prepares yeah. well. Like I've never seen. Yeah, he, uh, He'd have the best 40 in the league, wouldn't he? But, well, you know, I always see him warming up before the game when we're down there doing some game face interviews, and he's got an hour on everyone else. I reckon between him and Polks, they'd be probably the two best points in the league. <laughs> well, Polks would be happy about that. No, it's going to be a, a terrific game. Thanks, guys, for coming in. Thanks for having us here, and uh, good luck tonight, and good luck for the rest of the season. And no doubt we'll chat to you uh, when finals uh, get a bit closer, which, of course, Sorrento will be right in up to their ears. So no it's doubt. great to have the Hallahan boys here, Mitch and James, as part of our. Footy show on Game Face, the First Division edition. Low Farms, the Australian grower and supplier of rocket, lettuce, spinach and salad mixes. Websites, videos, Google marketing, SEO, what do you need for your business? Call the team at Chill, they really know their stuff. What's the last thing you ate? Twisties and vanilla carrot. Uh, that's your secret. What do you never leave home without? My keys. What's your guilty pleasure? Vanilla toast. Oh, piece of what? Leave my hockey. What are you scared of? Not much at the moment. What's your dream job? Win the lotto and just travel the world. What's your dream holiday destination? Uh, South Italy. What food can't you stand? Vegetables. Why don't you look at yourself? Get your game face on. To the Game Face Player of the Year Award in Division 1, Sean Downey of Rosebud has led all year and has a 14-point break in the seniors. He picked up five points on the weekend to go to 56. Joel Miller with Mornington has played some great footy in recent times for the Dogs. He got six points to be on 42. Mitch Hallahan of Sorrento, an outstanding game for the Sharks. Six points to be on 38. Dale Sutton, the Frankston Bombers, none. He remains on 37. His teammate from the Bombers, Jason Kingsbury, got four points despite their team's big loss. He's on 37. And Fletcher Husswaite of Rosebud, three points to move to 37. And Nick Marston of Sorrento, another pretty good game. He's had a good year. Marston from the Sharks, five points to be on 36. In the reserves, Jacob Beggs of Pines, five to move to 44. Eight in front of the rest of the field. Jared Douglas of Bond Beach, none. He's on 36. Ed Ellis of Rosebud, none. He's on 35. Two points for Ben Sharma and the Frankston Bombers to move to 33. No points for Reese de Gould of Frankston Bombers. He remains on 32. And six points for Isaac Drinkwater Coates of Rosebud. He progresses to 32. And four points for Julian Walton of Seaford. He also moves to 32. In the under-19s, Ben Ward of Edith Bale Aspendale, four points. He's on 37. He's now the new leader. From Nick Sakalis of Rosebud, no points to remain on 36. Ryan Rose of Mornington, no points. Also, he stays on 33. Joseph Ryan of Frankston Bombers, four to move to 31. Quentin Newton of Frankston Bombers, two to move to 31. Also joining them on 31 is Callan Gregory of Frankston YCW with four points on the weekend and a good game for Kyle Daff of Seaford. Five points to be on 31 and his Seaford teammate who was in the top three for a long time but hasn't scored points for quite a while is Lyndon Vracar of the Seaford Tigers. He remains on 31. Welcome to the Game Face Footy Show, the first division edition. We'll have our second division edition. We're doing it a little bit differently from now on. Uh, at Dramana and with the Tigers flying, it'll be good to get down there. They are top of the table at the moment. Just one loss so far. We'll talk more about it, Glenn, on Thursday. It's good to have you with us as well with Chris Holcomb away in Cairns, of course. Uh, he said it's a business trip for Harvey Norman, but uh, we'll believe him, but others probably wouldn't. Where did he go? Went to Monaco for the Grand Prix. Yeah. I, mean, that, I wouldn't have thought that was a business trip either. He had a great time doing that as well, but uh, that's going to be a huge match between Dramana and Red Hill first and second on the table. The Hillman have won eight in a row, so we'll talk about that a little bit later in the week. But we've still got 
a very important segment, and that is Team of the Week that Chris reads out. Chris writes the team. He sent you the team. Glenn is the messenger. So to use a well-worn statement, please do not shoot the messenger. If you've got any critical comments, and Chris tends to be the one that it goes through to the keeper a bit, poor old Black is for the second division team, gets belted from pillar to post. Please do not send uh, any cruel messages to Glenn. I'll wear them for a while, but Chris is the one if you want to say anything on Facebook about our team of the week. But you've got the team right here, Glenn. Sure do. All righty. So starting from the back line, Byron Barry and Ongo Ongo Ello, uh, the YCW boys, Ongo Ello, uh, and Nick Boswell for Pines, who's in good form. It's a very good back line, isn't it? It is. Uh, Marston, Miller and O'Hanlon on the half-back line. And then uh, moving up to the centre line, we've got Joel Miller from Mornington, Monaghan and Downey from Rosebud, who's having an absolute superb year. Half forward, Fox, who kicked a bag full on the on the weekend, I think. He, he managed to even in a losing yeah, side. Yeah, he kicked four. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Bussy from EDS and the other uh, Frankston Bomber, Dale Sutton on the uh, other half forward flank. Trent Dennis Lane is in the forward pocket with Aaron Edwards at full forward. Where else would you put him? And uh, they've got uh, we've got uh, Luke Tapscott. Starting in the other forward pocket. And you'd like to be in the forward pocket. You play him anywhere, Tab. You couldn't your half back flank with that raking kick, play him in the middle, play him as a ruck rover, but forward pocket, good play to have. Absolutely. So in the rucks, Bo Hendry, who's also having a good year. Yeah, he is. Hutchie from YC, found the goals on the weekend. Yeah, Kyle Hutchison. Hutchison. Yep. yep. And uh, Mitch Allahan, who we just interviewed, of course. How could you leave him out of the guts? Um, on the bench, uh, we've got Husswaite, uh, Calder, Williamson. Scanlon and Kingsbury. So, um, pretty solid team. Uh, any thoughts and views you have on that, please share it on Facebook. Hulks loves your feedback, so don't hold back. Um, Dan, I believe that there was a absolute, in first division, an absolute ripper of a mark oh, taken. I've seen it. It was. Oh, it's got to be the mark of the year. Now, I haven't seen enough football to say definitively it'll be mark of the year, Glenn, but, I mean, Mitch McCarthy of... Mount Elijah at the halfback flank at Bomb Beach, not far away from the scoreboard, having called there. He has just uh, used about four blokes as a stepladder. He's got up. It's a clean jump. He's taken the mark on his chest. That's how good it is. Well, let's have a look at it, shall we? It's a Peter Knight's mark, 1978. (laughs) So we've got the the footage up now. So he gets up. He does. I mean, it, it is one of the best marks that I've seen in football yeah. in general. It, I mean, it's like that marks that Jeremy Howe takes. Just clean, he got up, and then he had a, a good, clean fall mm. as well. So, didn't get injured. Some players get a little bit injured. Paul Van Der used to fall in his head when he take marks like that. But, uh, Which is good, because he's had McCarthy. some injuries. He's, he a, he's a good mate of Plugger from Game Face, mm. and um, he was on Collingwood's list, I think, last year. And, uh, yeah, he was too, that's right. And he's now played a few games for Frankston VFL and has done quite well. And uh, Man Eliza would be happy to have him in there. Yeah, just for the finals. They're mm. going all right. They're, what, top three, nine and five. So mm. we've got a very important round of footy coming up. We've spoken a lot about the big game down here, Sereno and Pines. It's the match of the day. It is first against fourth. And Pines with an excellent percentage, the best percentage in the comp, and certainly by winning last week by... Ten goals against the Bombers, that'll help them. I still think Sorrento at home, very hard to beat. You they? know what? I'm going to pick the Pines. Really? I just, You're going to get out of here alive? Well, you know, the room has cleared out. There's no Which red or white in the room. But <laughs> uh, I just think they're in form. And I just think that, you know, Pines match up well with Sorrento. They took it right up to them last time they played. I know they're playing here. But um, I'm going to throw that one in as a bit of a smoky. I'm going to be conservative and, and pick Sorrento, but I still think it'll be an outstanding game. It'll really test both teams. Mount Eliza hosting Seaford. Now, I think Seaford will be demoted, unfortunately, for them down to second division. Looks they that just way. haven't had any luck this year, and Mornington and Rosebud playing a bit better generally. And Mount Eliza just need to win games like this if they are to feature hmm. with a double chance in the finals. Chris Holcomb, good mate with Murph, the coach of Seaford, and we'd love to get him on the show at some stage, the brother of Bob Murphy, so mm. I think Man are comfortably at home as well. Big game here for the Frankston Bombers after their poor effort last week. They host Bond Beach at home at the Greek Beck Reserve. They just need to win this game because uh, the Elephants, as far as I'm concerned, are coming in regard to their spot in the five. Uh, they're only two points clear of YCW. We saw what they did last week, and we think that they're going to be very hard to keep out of the top five. But if the Bombers keep winning... 
It makes it tougher for YCW, but they just can't afford to drop a game like this against Bond Beach. Oh, well, they can't, but you just don't know which Bond Beach are going to turn no, up. That's true. Because you and I saw them play against YCW. YCW played well at Bond Beach that day. They did. And um, you know, Bond Beach not only beat YCW, but they came out the, the very next week and took on uh, Sorrento, I think well, it was. That's the very right. Next they. Week and they uh, don't allow teams to play at their optimum. That's how they got those two wins against good sides. And if they can stop the Bombers, and particularly if the Bombers get away to a slow start, mm. it tends to put them on the back foot. So it's a big game for them. Frankston, YCW and Mornington. A test, obviously, for Mornington again. They've had two good weeks where they got over the line in a real uh, slog fest in the wet against Mount Eliza. And then two weeks later, pushed Sorrento and kicked accurately and were with them for the entire game. YCW, though, I think they're back. They're Look, back. you've got to feel for Simon Goosey. If mm. you were to take the last quarters out of uh, the Mornington games this year, they're top three. And the Goose was getting messages from all his mates all over the place. They'd all got onto the Game Face app. And the Game Face app didn't have the correct scoring because uh, our scorer uh, decided to turn Fall off at three-quarter time. Mm. And uh, he was wondering why he was getting all these... Messages coming through with congratulations. Uh, you know, you've just run over the top of Sereno and um, it wasn't to be. So, you know, he's he's struggled with injuries. Uh, he's got a terrific team down there. Every team that have played Mornington and we talk to tell us how strong Mornington are. And, uh, yeah, I feel for Simon Goose. He's, he's done a good job down there and just hasn't been able to get reward for effort. But um, Franks and YCW, I think they're back. Well, they've got all their good players back, so I've Mornington, but Franks and YCW is probably just slightly better. Now, Edith Aspendale, they must win. They need a percentage booster. As Graham Yates said on the footy show a couple of weeks ago at the Bay Hotel, one of their major sponsors at Morty Alec, they don't win big, but they lost big last week, and that has really affected their percentage because of what happened in round one. I would think they'll beat Rosebud, but you, you know, know they want to be playing well. To do I, it. I think EDS, there's no way that they'll dish up another performance two weeks in a row. They, I was at the Rosebud game the last time EDS played them, and uh, Rosebud looked like they were going to win that game halfway through the last quarter. They took it right up to them. Of course, they've got their, their big star in Bentley out of that team, so it's yeah. not the same team anymore. But no. um, Adrian McBean, who has announced his retirement from, from Rosebud, yeah, it'll be nice to see him uh, get at least a, a, another good win it would. as a bit of a send-off, but yeah, uh, I don't think EDS will allow him to have it. Do we know who's coaching Rosebud yet, uh, Glenn? No, but uh, I know that Lockie White, the president, has... Um, has uh, posted that they're looking for not only a coach for the seniors but also uh, the reserves. Right. So, um, yeah, they'll, they won't take long for them to find somebody. They're a good club. They'll yeah. be a good team next year. They'll have plenty going for them. So that'll be a terrific job for some somebody out there to, to step in and take on not only the, the senior side but also the reserves. Do you think they'll be an experienced coach or a first time? I wouldn't like to say, I just don't know. You know, there's rumours floating around everywhere at the yeah, moment about is. all sorts of clubs that yeah, are looking for coaches and I don't buy into any of it because yeah. the minute you do, you look like a fool. So it's what they say, isn't it? The minute you assume, you make an ass out of you and me. So well, count that, me out of that. That's exactly right. There was a movie and I can't think of the exact line, something about assumption is the greatest form of something which I cannot use <laughs> on air. It was from one of the Steven Seagal movies, I think, Under Siege yeah. 2, the, the, the movie on the train. But anyway, that's for another day. Thank you, Glenn. Great to have you with us. Uh, it's been wonderful being down here at uh, Sorrento and uh, at the Shark Bar. Unfortunately, no refreshments for us. We might get one on the, on the way home, uh, which, which would be lovely. But uh, Wonderful that the boys made themselves available and, of course, all our guests, thanks to Frank Sinarisel. Blackers and uh, Holcomb and Josh Moore, get yourselves ready because next week you're back on, I'm out. Very good. They'll be there on Tuesday night. We'll be down, of course, at Dramana, down in this neck of the woods again on Thursday for the second division footy show on Game Face. We'll catch you there.